Welcome everyone to our 60-minute vinyasa practice uh, here in Harvard Gulch Park. I hope everyone is doing well today. Let's begin by taking seven breaths. And with seven breaths, see if you can allow yourself to do drop into presence. <sighs> and just start to enjoy this beautiful morning. Maybe receiving it as a gift. You can keep your focus on your breath, following the breath as it flows in and out. And take these last few breaths to begin to notice the quality of the breath. That is, what are the characteristics of the breath that you're experiencing? Does the breath feel soft and smooth and gentle? Or maybe it feels a little rough and ragged this morning. There's nothing you need to do about that, just notice. And one more breath. And now let that go. And bring the hands behind you. Press your palms into the mat with the fingers pointing towards the back of the mat. Then draw your elbows as close together as you can. At the same time, lift your chin up and press your chest up towards the sky. See if you can let your head drop down. So head dropping back, pressing the palms into the mat. Now slowly begin to level the chin. And then as you lean forward, feel your arms float up and overhead. And then exhale the hands, bringing them to heart center. On an inhale, reach back up. Then interlace the fingers and bring the hands to the back of the head. Bring the elbows apart and drop the right elbow down. Reach the left elbow up and then back to center and over to the other side. We're just going to do some side stretches. Left elbow down, right elbow reaching high and back to center. Try and keep your spine long. So all we're doing is stretching the side body. We're not rounding the spine at all. Bless you. And left hand down, right hand reaching and inhale back to center and right elbow down the left elbow up one more time on each side left elbow down right elbow is high feel that stretch on the right side and inhale back to center and last time left elbow or right elbow down rather left elbow reaching towards the sky and then back to center with the core engaged bring the elbows together and then bring the elbows down in front of you maybe touching the elbows to the mat. On an inhale, core engages as you rise up, bring the elbows apart, lift the chin, pull the chin up towards the sky, look up. And bring the elbows together, elbows come down again towards the mat, rounding the spine deeply. Inhale, rise back up, elbows come apart. Second time here, lift the chin up towards the sky, reach the elbows apart. And last time, bringing the elbows together. Elbows touch here if you can, and then elbows down to the mat. And inhale, rise back up. This is the last one. Reach the elbows apart, lift the chin up. Now level your chin, reach the arms high, interlace the fingers, and stretch the palms towards the sky. So invert the palms, stretch them up, and then bring the arms out to a T. Bring the left hand down, reach up and over with the right hand. We'll stretch the right side body a little bit more. And back to center. Right elbow down, left or right hand down, left hand reaching. Let's just flow from side to side. Let the breath begin to synchronize with the movement. 
and stretch out the side body just a little bit more. And then back to center. Once you're there, take a twist to the right, palms face to the right, reach the hands apart from one another. Yeah, that right. <laughs> a lot of confusion about right and left. I don't know why that is. Back to center and over to the left side. Palms face to the left now. Keep your spine long, so try not to round. And then back to center and over to the other side. Second time here. Back to center and over to the left. And now one more time on each side. Off to the uh, right, back to center and left. Now bring your left hand down behind you. Press the left palm into the mat. Reach the right hand up. Press into the left palm and then stretch that right hand up towards the sky and lift your gaze up so you're looking at the thumb on the right hand. Take a breath and now begin to lean forward. Feel the weight come off the left hand. Let that left hand float back up. And then all the way over to the other side, to the right side, plant the right hand behind you. Reach the left hand up. Stretch up as you press into the right hand. Reach the left hand high and look up towards the thumb on the left hand. Take a breath. Now lean forward so the weight comes off the back hand and back to center. Bring the hands to the knees, palms face down. How's your neck today? Need a little stretching on the neck? Yeah, right ear towards right shoulder. Mm. You can just pause there for a moment and feel that stretch on the left side of the neck. Then let your chin drop to your chest nice and slow and then bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. Remember to drop the uh, right shoulder down a little bit. So. Left ear to left shoulder. Not sure if that's what I said. And then chin to chest. And now right ear to right shoulder. And chin to chest. And left ear to left shoulder. And chin to chest. And now lift your chin up high. Press the palms into the knees. Press the chest up. Take a deep breath. Then as you exhale, level the chin. And bring the hands down in front. Let's come to table pose. Press your hands into the mat so the elbows straighten and the shoulders rise up a little bit. Keep your gaze straight down so you're looking between the thumbs more or less. Press the hips to the right and then press the hips over to the left. We're just going to start to open up the hips now. And then to the right and to the left. What this is doing is stretching the muscles on the outside of the hips called the hip abductor muscles and to the left and then back to center. From there walk the hands forward a few inches and then press the hips to the right again and then bring the hips forward. We'll make some circles with the hips now and then to the left and back and to the right forward over the hands and then to the left and back one more time around and then flow back the other way three times the other direction hips to the left then forward and then to the right and back and left and forward and right and back and one more time around and then back to center <clears throat> once you're there bring the hands back so the hands are under the shoulders and now table extension pose reach the left hand forward press back through the right heel so the toes are pointing down on the right foot then point the toes on the right foot and press the toes towards the back of your mat reach the fingertips forward just a little bit more take a breath and then release it by bringing the elbow towards the knee and then reach back out do that a second time bring elbow towards knee spine is rounding and reach back out and one more time on this side elbow comes towards knee and then reach back out and then bring the left hand down 
Bring the right knee towards the uh, chin, rounding the spine, and then press straight back through the right heel. Now rotate the toes on the right foot so they point right and bring the right knee forward towards the right shoulder. Good job, everybody. Keep that knee as high as you can and then press back through the right heel. Rotate the toes so they point down and bring the right knee down so it meets the left knee. Other side of table extension, left foot reaches back, right hand reaches forward. Remember thumb points up on the right hand and stretch it out. A little bit more length even. Also recall that if you spread your fingers on the left hand, you'll create a nice stable base for the pose. Now bring elbow towards knee, spine rounds, good job. And reach back out. Second time, fluid movement. Elbow towards knee and reach back out. And one more time, elbow comes towards knee and reach back out. And then bring the right hand down Rotate the toes on the left foot so they point left. Bend the left knee, bring it forward towards the left shoulder, and then press straight back through the left heel. Now rotate the toes so they point down. Bend the left knee, bring it towards the chin. Touch the chin with the knee if you can, and then press straight back and bring the left knee down so it meets the right knee. Inhale to cow pose, and exhale to cat. We're gonna flow through seven times Six more, inhaling to cow and exhaling to cat. Keep it going five more times. Mm. Big, beautiful, deep breaths. And three more times through. And one more. Good job, everybody. Come back to a neutral spine. Now, walk your hands forward about three inches and then straighten the right leg, press back through the right heel. The toes are tucked on that right foot. The toes are on the mat. So what we're doing is creating a stretch in the calf muscle on the right side and the right leg. Press the hands into the mat a little bit more vigorously, and as you do that, press back on the right heel so you start to feel a big stretch in the back of that right leg. Now begin to straighten the left leg and press back on the left heel. We're in plank pose now. Press back on both heels. Press both hands into the mat. Keep your hips so they're about uh, in line with your shoulders and your heels. Take another breath. And now bring the right knee down and press back through the left heel even more. Feeling that nice stretch in the back of the left leg and the calf muscle on the left leg. Now straighten the right leg back to plank pose and lift your hips into downward facing dog. Take one breath in downward dog. Take the opportunity to lengthen the spine here and then walk your feet forward so that you come to a standing forward fold, the head drops down. See if you can bring the weight into the front of the feet. Let your head get even a little bit heavier. Hmm. Now keep your chin on your chest and round your spine, keeping the weight in the front of the feet. As you rise, you can drag your hands along the front of the legs if that feels good. Once you're up, let your arms float up high. And then exhale and bring the hands to heart center. On an inhale, reach back up. Exhale and bring the arms out to a T, palms face down. Come all the way down and then to a half lift. And then release the head all the way down. Chin on chest, round the spine, rising second time this way. Draw the navel up as you rise, let the arms float high. Palms together and to heart center. On an inhale, up. And arms out to a T and swan dive into a forward fold and then a half lift. Exhale, let your head drop down. A little bend in the knees is okay here. Now chin on chest, round the spine, rising third time this way. Arms reach up and overhead. Pause there, bring the weight into the front of the feet. Bend the knees just a little 
and then reach up and back into a back bend. Press the chest up towards the sky. See if you can press your hips forward just a little bit more, deepening the back bend and breathe. Now reach straight up and bring the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers behind the back and press the knuckles towards the heels. Draw the shoulder blades together on the back. Breathe into the space you're creating at the top of the chest. Now keep your spine long, hinge at the hips and slowly fold forward. Eventually reach the knuckles up and overhead, maybe forward towards the front of your space. And then release the hands, bring them all the way down. Leave the right foot forward, step the left foot back into runner's lunge. Right knee bent about 90 degrees. And press back on that left heel again until you feel that stretch in the calf muscle on the left leg. Now bring the left knee to the mat and untuck the toes. Press the top of the left foot into the mat. Press into the right foot and rise into a low crescent lunge. A lot of people have shown up since uh, I started. Where did you all come from? <laughs> Keep reaching through the wrists. Press the right knee forward a little bit more. It's like the group is multiplying. <laughs> Arms out to a T now with the palms facing forward, thumbs point up. Reach the hands apart from one another. Now take a twist to the right. Nice, slow movement, very fluid. Take a breath there. Now bring the palms together and then bring your left elbow to your right knee and find your prayer twist. Reach that right elbow up. Maybe the right elbow will stack over the palms and the palms over the left elbow. Remember, you can bring your hands closer to your chest or farther away. That will change the way the pose feels. Keep the palms together as you press into the right foot and rise nice and slow. Back to center and then reach up high and bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. Now step the left foot forward into a standing forward fold. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Straighten the elbows. Press the skin of the palms together. Let your head drop down. Let the neck muscles disengage if the hamstrings are feeling tight. So if you're feeling a big stretch in the hamstrings, bend your knees a little bit so that your head can drop down just a bit more. We can let a little bit more blood rush to the head. Now keep the weight in the front of the feet and rise. Nice and slow coming up. Let the blood pressure equalize. Once you're up, release your hands, reach them high, and then find that back bend again where we started. Press the chest up a little bit higher, bend the knees a little bit more, and then release. Reach up high and exhale the hands to heart center. Take a breath. Let's do that again. Inhale up and back. Exhale and fold forward. Come to a half lift. Hands at the top of the shins. Press, into the, press the palms into the shins. Lengthen your spine. Reach your head forward a little bit and press your tailbone back. Draw the navel up just a bit. Now a slight bend in the knees and fold forward. Let your head drop down. Bring the hands all the way down to the mat. Step the right foot back this time. Press back on the right heel. Left knee bent about 90 degrees. So this is runner's lunge. Head reaching forward. Right heel pressing back. Now bring the right knee to the mat and reach your arms high into a low crescent lunge on our second side. Anybody remember the name of this pose? Low crescent lunge? I say it all the time. Anjaneyasana is the name of the pose. What a beautiful name. Anjaneyasana. Isn't that nice? I like it. Press that left knee forward even a little bit more. Reach up through the wrist, keeping the upper body nice and long. Now the arms come out to a T. Again, palms face forward, thumbs point up. Now take your twist to the left, pause, take a breath. Now bring the palms together and then bring the right elbow to the left knee, joining the palms into a prayer twist. Palms stay together as you press in the left foot, come back to center, the core engages deeply, reach up high, and then exhale the hands down on either side of the left foot. Now tuck the toes, step the right foot forward so it meets the left foot Back to a standing forward fold. Now bring the arms out to a T with the palms facing down. Reverse swan dive to rise. Nice and slow. Reach up high. 
and exhale the hands to heart center. Take a breath. Everybody doing all right? What a gorgeous morning, huh? Mm. Bring the hands behind again, interlace the fingers. Knuckles press down towards the heels, shoulder blades draw together. Keep the spine long, hinge at the hips. Come all the way down, reach the knuckles high, forward perhaps. Bring the weight into the front of the feet even a little bit more so your heels begin to float. And then release the hands, bring them all the way down to the mat. Right foot stays forward, step the left foot back. Right foot steps back now to meet the left foot in plank pose. Check your alignment. So check and see if your hips, your shoulders, and your heels are in a line. If they're not, adjust the pose accordingly. Maybe bring the hips down a little bit for most of you. Just an inch or so will work. Now bring the knees to the mat. Chest and chin follow as we come into cobra pose. Lift the heart up off the mat in cobra pose. Remember the elbows stay bent. Tops of the feet pressing down into the mat so the toes are untucked. Good adjustments. And then release all the way down. Now tuck your toes. Push to plank. And let's find our second downward facing dog. Hard to believe we're 23 minutes into the practice, practice and this is only our second downward facing dog. Now pedal it out. Bend one knee and then the other. Keep your spine long. But feel free to let your hips sway from side to side. So the hips can become asymmetrical as you bend one knee and straighten the other leg. Keep the spine long, so keep pressing the hands into the mat. Good job. Now find stillness. Inhale, right leg rises, lift it high. Find three-legged dog now. Open the hips to the right, pressing both hands into the mat. Stack the right hip over the left hip to the extent that you are able to. Now refine the pose a little bit. Maybe lift that right knee up a bit more. Reach it up and back, challenging yourself in the pose. Beautiful work. Level the hips now. And then step your right foot forward, bringing it between the hands. Now heel toe the right foot over to the right a little bit. The left knee is still off the mat. Left leg is straight and strong. Rise to high crescent lunge. Arms reach high in the high crescent lunge. What's hard to believe, but I think we all have our right knee forward, which is good. The right foot is forward. Reach up high. Now bring the arms out to a T. Palms face down. Reach the hands apart from one another. Keep the left knee bent. Keep your spine long and come down. Bring the left shoulder down to the left knee, or sorry, the right shoulder down to the right knee, and then slowly come back up, nice and slow. Now reach up high, and then bring the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Straighten the elbows. Keep the spine long, hinge at the hips. Second time, bring the uh, right shoulder down to the right knee, and then slowly press into that right foot and come back up. Once you're up, release the hands. Reach them high, and then out to a T, palms facing down. Now hinge at the hips again, spine stays long, left shoulder comes down towards left knee. Sweep the arms forward now so the biceps are on either side of the ears. Right knee stays bent, rise, nice and slow, coming up. Now bring the hands down on either side of the right foot and step the right foot back into plank pose. Check your alignment again in plank. Three deep breaths. Two more, stay with it, and one more. Now flow through vinyasa, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, you choose. Upward facing dog, see if you can bring your knees off the mat and upward dog, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. Press the navel forward, press the chest forward, find a deeper back bend for you, whatever that means for you. That's it. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Downward facing dog. Good work, everybody. Stretch it out a little bit now. Let the hips sway side to side and become asymmetrical if you like. Now find stillness in the pose. Left leg rises. Three-legged dog, second side. Open the hips to the left this time. Work on stacking the left hip 
over the right hip. Maybe lift that left knee up just a little bit more, refining the pose just the slightest bit, challenging yourself, moving into a space that maybe you haven't been in before. Finding the edge of the pose, that place where you're not comfortable anymore and almost out of control. Good job. Level the hips off now and step the left foot forward so it comes between the hands. Good step throughs. Heel toe the left foot over the left just a bit. Keep the left knee bent and rise. High crescent lunge. How does it feel? Good. Everybody looks really sturdy, strong. Some flying thing just flew into my mouth. Try not to eat it. Bring your arms out to a T, palms face down, hands reach apart from one another. Take a deep breath. Now keep your left knee bent and slowly come down. Bring that left shoulder down to the left knee if you can. Let it rest there and then slowly come back up. Building strength. Hands come behind, interlace in the awkward way. Use the non-dominant grip. Keep the spine long. Draw the navel in a little bit. Now hinge at that left hip. Bring the left shoulder down second time on this side. Good job. Inhale slowly, nice and slow coming up. Now arms come out to a T. Palms face down. Bring that left shoulder down last time. Now remember, we sweep the arms forward so the biceps are on either side of the ears. Keep the left knee bent, nice and slow, coming up. Good job. Bring the hands to heart center now. And bring the weight into the left foot so that the, whoa, so that the right foot <laughs> begins to float. And then find tree pose. <sighs> One more breath. Reach the arms up and overhead. Find arrow mudra. Interlace the fingers. Point the index fingers. Now release the uh, right foot, straighten the right leg, swing the right leg back, reach the fingertips forward as you come into warrior three. Keep the length. Try and create even more length between the fingertips and that right foot. Now bring the arms out to a T and half moon pose, left hand comes down, right side of the heart opens, and the right hip stacks over the left hip. Keep that length that you found in warrior three, reaching the head forward, pressing back through the right foot. And bring the right hand down, standing splits. One breath in standing splits. On the exhale, let your head drop down a little bit more. And then bend the left knee and step way back with the right foot. Step the left foot back so it meets the right foot. Take a breath. We're in plank pose. Take two more. Good job. Now flow through a vinyasa, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga into upward facing dog. <sighs> Breathe into upward facing dog. And then find downward facing dog. On an inhale, reach the right leg up. Step the right foot about a three quarter step forward. Now rise up into warrior one. 
and then bring the weight into the right foot and step the left foot into tree pose. Hmm? Yeah, that happens. Well, the earth does that just to challenge you in the balancing poses and just make it more complicated. I wonder what you had for breakfast. <laughs> Balancing poses are a wonderful place to adopt a kind of meditative attitude, a mindfulness of where you are, but also to let go. So not take it all too seriously and just recognize you're balancing. Now arms reach up, interlace the fingers, point the index fingers, find that arrow mudra again, stretch up so you're really tall and feel that length in the whole body between the sole of the right foot and the fingertips reaching high. Release the left foot, straighten the left leg and slowly swing that left leg back, reaching the fingertips forward as we come into warrior three on our second side. Reach just a little bit more. That includes pressing back through that left foot. See if you can lift the left foot up just a little bit higher so that it's level with the hip on the left side. Beautiful work, everybody. Arms out to a T, half moon pose. Right hand comes down. That right hand should be uh, more than a foot forward and out to the side a little bit. Now see if you can open the left side of the chest up so that the left shoulder is stacked over the right shoulder more or less. Good job. Release the left hand down, standing splits. One breath here, just like we did on the other side. Now bend the right knee, step way back with the left foot into runner's lunge. Right foot steps back this time into a plank pose. Three breaths in plank. And one more. Now release the knees to the mat. Let's find child's pose. Bring the knees out to the edges of the mat. You let your forehead rest on the mat if you like. Is your mat dirty? <laughs> it's got every hand in this car. <laughs> Well, I think it's wonderful that the bugs want to join us for yoga. I think we should honor that. Say thank you, bugs, for joining us for yoga. <laughs> Two more breaths. Just letting everything start to settle. <laughs> One more breath. Good job, everybody. Rise to table pose now. And then tuck your toes and let your hips rise. Downward facing dog. Reach the right leg up and overhead. Three-legged dog. Hips are going to open to the right. And again, see if you can refine the pose a little bit more. Maybe lifting that right knee up a little higher. Maybe pressing the left heel down towards the mat so you create sensation in the back of the left leg. Now mindfully level the hips and then step the right foot all the way forward so it comes between the hands. Right knee bent now about 90 degrees Maybe step the right foot forward just a little bit more, creating a little bit longer stance in the lunge. Now leave your left hand down. Reach your right hand high, coming to a lunge twist. Can you stack that right hand over the right shoulder and the right shoulder over the left shoulder, keeping the spine long? Now right hand comes down inside the right foot into the revolt lunge twist. Keep the spine long as you reach the left hand high. 
Now the left heel spins to the mat and rise to warrior two. Hmm. Check in with the right knee. Make sure that right knee is pointing straight forward. Hmm. Settle into warrior two just a little bit more. Remember to roll that back, back ankle towards the back of the mat. So you're pressing down on the pinky toe of that left foot. Now extended side angle, bring the elbow to the knee, reach through that right shoulder, stretching through the fingertips of the right hand. Left knee stays bent as you rise back to warrior two. Now drop the right hand to the back of the right leg, reach the left hand straight up, bend the left knee a little bit more, press the left knee forward, reach up even more through that left hand, or right hand rather, yeah. And then back to extended side angle pose. Rise back to warrior two. Drop the right hand down, or sorry, the left hand down. Reach the right hand up. Stretch up nice and high. So you feel that stretch on the whole right side. Little engagement in the quadricep muscles as well. And extended side angle pose. Third time, last one on this side. Breathe as you lengthen, exhale into the stretch, and then rise to our last upward warrior pose. Left knee bends, sorry, right knee bends, right hand reaches high. Now straighten the right leg and reach up and back into a reverse triangle pose. Press into the left foot here. Now the arms come out to a T, palms face down, and triangle pose. Press into the back foot as you reach forward. And then when you're ready, drop the right hand down into triangle pose. Left hand reaches high. Two more breaths. You're almost off on your own here. <laughs> One more. Now right knee bends, rise back to warrior two, Exhale, settle in a little bit more. Good. Now bring the hands down on either side of the right foot. Come up onto the ball of the left foot and step the right foot back to plank pose. Three breaths in plank. And one more. Now a side plank. Right hand stays down. Roll over onto the pinky toe side of the right foot. Left hand reaches high. Hips are still in alignment with the heels and the shoulders. So try not to lift your hips up. Just keep that long straight line. Beautiful. Left hand comes down now. Roll the other side. Right hand reaches. Side plank, second side. And right hand down. Back to plank. Take a breath. And flow through a vinyasa. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, as always, it's your choice. When you're ready, downward facing dog. Awesome work, everybody. That was kind of a rough sequence. You did it really well. We only have one more side to do. Inhale, left leg rises. Three-legged dog, opening the hips to the left. And again, work on refining your three-legged dog. Pressing the right heel down. Stacking the left, shoulder, left hip rather a little bit more over the right hip. Maybe pick that left knee up just a bit more. And now level the hips off. Check in with your hips. Make sure they're level. And then step the left foot forward all the way between the hands. Right hand stays down now. Left hand reaches high in the little lunge twist. And bring the left hand down inside that left foot. Reach the right hand high. Feel contact between the left palm and the mat. So not just the fingertips. Now reach the right hand up a little bit higher. Keep the left knee bent. Now spin the right heel to the mat if you haven't done so already. And rise, warrior two. Whew. Settle into the pose.
Extended side angle now. Bring the elbow to the knee. Reach through the right hand. Feel the stretch coming out of that right shoulder. Rise to warrior two. Palms face down. Now drop the right hand down. Reach the left hand straight up. Press the left knee forward a little bit more. You probably are feeling a lot of engagement in the uh, quadricep muscles on the left leg. Anybody feeling that? Yes. Yeah. So if you drop the hips a little more by pressing the left knee forward a little more, you're going to deepen that sensation and that engagement of the quadricep muscles. Now extended side angle pose. Second one on this side, reaching through the right shoulder. Really stretch it out. Keep the left knee bent and rise back to our upward warrior. Left hand reaches high, right hand down the back of the leg. You could also wrap that right hand behind your back if you want, just for a little different feel. Now reach up even more through that left hand, bend the left knee just a bit more. And then extended side angle, last one on this side. Reach through the right hand, stretch it out. And rise to our last upward warrior. Left knee still is bent. Maybe press the left knee forward a little more. Just a little more, Lisa. There you go. And then back to warrior two. Whew, take a breath. Now straighten the left leg. Reach up and back with the left hand. Remember to press into the left foot. Now the arms come out to a T with the palms facing down. Hands reach apart from one another, 180 degrees. Now press into the back foot this time. Reach the left hand forward as you come towards triangle pose. Left hand drops down, right hand reaches up. Three more breaths. Open up the right shoulder a little bit more, Paco, if you can. Open up. There you go. Last breath, in this pose anyway. Now left knee bends, rise to warrior two. Take a breath there, and then exhale the hands down on either side of the left foot. Come up onto the ball of the right foot, and left foot steps back, plank pose. Three breaths in plank. Two more, big, deep breaths. And now flow through vinyasa. This will be our final vinyasa, the practice. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga and upward facing dog. And then finish in child's pose. Bring the knees to the mat. So you didn't used to be able to hold a plank that long, did you? You got much stronger. Good job. Three more breaths in child's pose. Let your forehead rest on the mat. Let go of all of the tension, all the energy that you're storing in your body now that was created by our active sequences. Mm. Let everything start to settle. One more breath. Now rise to table pose and bring the knees back so they're under the hips. And now we're going to do puppy dog pose. So I want you to walk your hands forward as far as you can and keep your hips over your knees. That may mean you need to walk the knees back or the hands forward a little bit more. And then once you're there, let your chest drop down towards the mat and maybe keep your chin on the mat so you can lift the chin if that doesn't cause um, pain in the back of the neck. If that creates any pain in the back of the neck, bring your forehead back down. But if you can, lift the chin even higher, deepening the back bend. Now notice your breath. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, let your heart melt down a little bit more into the mat, really deepening the back bend. Do that three more times, breathing in, exhaling the heart down. Mm. 
twice more. And one more time, breathe in deeply, exhale the heart down, feeling a nice stretch in the shoulders. And now come out of the pose by drawing the navel up towards the sky. And then bring the elbows down to the mat. Keep your hips right over your knees. Walk the elbows back to the knees with the palms still on the mat. And then bring the top of the head, not the forehead, but the very top of the head to the mat. <coughs> Excuse me. Lift your hips up a little bit so the hips are still over the knees. Good adjustments. And breathe. This is called a rabbit pose. One more breath. Making friends with the little bugs on your mat. Good job. Come back to table pose. And then just come to a seat. Once you're seated, bend your knees. Keep the spine long. Lean back. Reach the hands forward. So about a 90 degree angle between the thighs and the upper body. And the hands, or the arms rather, pretty much a level. And then from there, lean back just a little bit and pick the feet up into a half boat pose. Straighten the legs into a full boat pose. If you want, you can support the legs. That's always an option with the palms behind the knees. If you do that, try not to grab. Just support with the palms. Two more breaths in your version of boat pose. And one more big, full, complete breath. And then release the heels slowly to the mat as you reach your arms up and overhead. And then exhale, fold forward over both legs, letting the forehead come down towards the shin or the knees. Now reach the fingertips forward and slowly rise back up. Keep the spine nice and long as you come up. And then release the hands and bring them down. Let's bend the knees now and reposition yourself on your mat. We're going to come down to the back. So come down so that your head is still on the mat. And reach your feet up to the sky in legs up the wall pose. I don't remember if we did this last week or not, but um, I'll try and cue it, hopefully in a way that makes sense to you. Bring your f legs apart so that there's about a 90 degree angle between the legs. Bring the arms out to a T now, and then flip your palms so the palms face down. So you're pro providing support for your body with the palms. Now what I'm going to ask you to do is just bring the left foot down to the grass or to the floor and as you, out to the side. Yeah, all the way out to the side. Both legs stay straight. And your right foot is reaching straight up. So let's everybody get there. Actually, let's everybody come back up. Bring the left leg back up. Bring the feet out. And now I want you to keep your legs in the same plane that they're in right now as you bring the left foot down again and the right leg comes up. So the right foot is reaching up towards the sky. The left leg is off to the side 90 degrees. Got that? Good. Now we're going to go over to the other side. So bring the right foot all the way down and the left leg reaches up. There we go. Now we're just going to cycle between that. Left foot comes down, right foot reaches up, and then back through center, and right foot down, left foot up. And left foot down, right foot up, and right foot down, and left foot reaches up to the sky. 
Now back to center. Reach the arms up and overhead. Let the back of the hands come down on the uh, space behind you. Now you can stay here or you can come into a wide-legged plow pose, bringing the toes up and overhead and touching them down on the grass or the floor behind you. Wide-legged plow is your option. Now bring your hands to your low back if you're in plow. And if you're in legs up the wall, you can move towards a version of shoulder stand. Those who are in the wide-legged plow, bring your feet together. And then bring the feet up and overhead so the feet are over the hips, more or less, into a version of shoulder stand. In shoulder stand, press the feet up towards the sky. And those who got here from wide-legged plow, bring your feet apart and then bring the feet back down behind you into wide-legged plow. And if you got here from legs up the wall, return to legs up the wall. Let's all meet in legs up the wall pose with the feet back together, the tailbone on the mat. Now point the toes just slightly, bring the arms back out to a T, flip the palms so they face down. Bring the right foot all the way down to the mat. Right leg stays straight. And left foot comes across the body and over to the right side. And your gaze shifts to the left. Try and relax the back of the left shoulder. And slowly let that left foot float back up. Keep both legs straight. Bring the left foot down, reach the right foot back up. Point gently through the toes. And now bring the uh, right foot over to the left side, let it land. And your gaze shifts to the right. And the eyes can gently close if you like. Two more breaths here. And one more. Good job, everybody. Bring that right leg back up. Bring the left foot up to meet it. Point the toes again gently so fo both feet are up. Bring your, your hands down by your side. Press the palms gently into the mat. Keep your legs straight and let your heels float all the way down. Lots and lots of core engagement as you do that. Pay attention to the floor engage, uh, to the uh, uh, abdominal engagement, and then as the heels land, let it all go, and let's find Shavasana. Thank you all for your beautiful effort in that practice. And now thank you for letting go of that effort. Let all of the effort drain out of you each time you exhale.
try and tune in even a little bit more deeply to whatever sensations you're experiencing on this beautiful morning that we've been given. Now, if the sensation or sensations that you're experiencing include something crawling on you, see if you can experience the sensation without reacting to it. Know that you're safe and no harm is going to come to you from the little ant. It's just an annoyance And it's causing a reaction. What I'm inviting you to do is to have the experience of the little bug that's harmless without responding to it. Just accept that it's there. Come back to your breath now. Begin to follow the flow of the breath in and out. When you're ready, bend your knees and roll to your side. And slowly bring yourself to a seat. Once you're seated, you can bring your hands to heart center if you like. Take a deep breath in and let it go. And one more time, a deep breath in and let it go. Join me now if you like in offering loving kindness. May you be happy and may you be well and safe. May you be peaceful and may you be at ease. Namaste.